Okay, so I know, I know, I know I'm late on the bandwagon, but it takes a little longer for things to get to me. I don't get two day Amazon Prime shipping. I'm waiting seven to 10 business days for my packages. Not that I'm complaining. I live on a beautiful island in the Caribbean. I could sit underneath a coconut tree at the beach, smoking a joint and drinking pina coladas all day, and no one would care. All things considered, I'm doing pretty well. I'm just saying that I'm working within constraints here. Today, I'm not going to be reviewing the Game of Thrones beer box set. I'm going to be reviewing how well each beer fits the different character that it's supposed to represent. I'm a huge fan of the Game of Thrones TV show series and the A Song of Ice and Fire book series. So this is really exciting for me. I get to combine my loves of literature and beer. What could be better than this right now? I've got this fun Game of Thrones beer box set that comes with a cute little glass. And so uh, there's a list on the side of the box and that's the order that I'm going to be drinking these in. So. Let's get started! The first beer on our list is Hand of the Queen, a barley wine ale for Tyrion, described as a bold interpretation of a classic barley wine ale, rich and full-bodied, offering intense notes of dark fruit and malty sweetness. This is a beer for those who drink and know things. That description sounds pretty spot on for Tyrion, but let's give it a taste and see how it holds up. Okay, I can definitely smell those malty notes and the, the dark fruit that they're alluding to. That is rich and alcoholic, which is pretty spot on for Tyrion. Tyrion is a wine drinker, which I won't hold against him, but yeah, those dark fruit notes, like I'm getting some kind of cherry, almost some fig, and that's very reminiscent of the red wine that Tyrion would typically drink, and I, um, I can imagine Tyrion waking up hungover after a night of debauchery, just like reeking of, of this particular alcohol. If I had to offer an alternative, I would say a quadruple, specifically a Trappist style quadruple. Um, and if you don't know what a Trappist is, I've covered that in a previous video, which I will link over there and also down in the description. The quadruple is equally fruity, rich, and alcoholic, but it's also a little bit sweeter. And also I think Tyrion would get a kick out of the idea of a Septon brewing his beer. That being said, Omegang is a secular brewery, so they couldn't make a Trappist style quadruple, they could only make a regular quadruple. But either way, I still think they did a pretty good job. Oh, I forgot to mention that this one comes in at 10.7%, so when I said alcoholic, I was not kidding. Next up is the Mother of Dragons, a smoked porter creek blend for Daenerys, described as a richly complex blend of smoked porter and Belgian creek. It pours a ruby brown with alluring aromas of tart cherry, dark roast, and hints of smoke, brewed for those who nurture dragons. Okay, there's a lot going on here. Creek is a lambic style beer made with cherries that's already made with several batches of the same beer. And so then in addition to that, they add a smoked porter, which, okay, if you're going for like the red color, why not just smoke the creek blend? Uh, I admit I'm a little hesitant about this one just because it sounds like there is so much into it, but maybe I shouldn't judge a beer by its label and I should just go ahead and taste it. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's not like the very bright red color. It's a little darker than I was expecting. Wow, <laughs> that is definitely, I can tell, is going to be very tart. I can smell the cherries. It reminds me of the Rosetta, which is another Omegang Lambic style beer made with cherries. So I, I have a suspicion that these two are going to have a lot in common. I'm not smelling the smokiness. That is way better than I was expecting it to be. <laughs> After tasting it, I can see why they went with adding the smoked porter to the creek blend instead of just smoking the creek because it does give it a fuller body and makes it smoother in taste. Um, and it's not just like pow in your face with the smokiness. It's very subtle, but it plays off the cherries really well. 
That all fits Daenerys pretty well because she's powerful, she's unique, and the deep color and the smokiness, it, it is perfect for the mother of dragons. I can't think of a different beer to give to Daenerys, uh, so Omegang crushed it. The third beer on the list is Queen of the Seven Kingdoms, a sour blonde ale for Cersei, described as an exquisite blend of sour ale and Belgian-style blonde ale. It pours a pale golden hue with a brilliant white head, while flavors of citrus and melon meld with notes of apricot over a malty base. Right out the gate, I'm skeptical. This beer style seems like it was chosen because someone was just like, oh, ha, 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 ha sour blonde. But I don't actually feel like that fits Cersei. It undermines what a powerful villain is. Remember, she's been ruling Westeros in one capacity or another for the entirety that we've seen her. Choosing Sour Blonde just feels lazy to me. I mean, the other beers were chosen because not just the name of the beer's style, but the contents of the beer fit the character, and so this one kind of feels like a cop-out. But I'm maybe reading too much into it, and I just need to stop talking about it and taste it, so I'm going to do that. Well, it's definitely blonde. To me, this beer just doesn't fit Cersei because I'm getting a lot of sourness, but Cersei isn't just sour, she's also pretty bitter, and I'm not getting the bitterness that I want. In addition to that, this beer is only 6.4%, the least alcoholic in the group, which is weird because Cersei is the most alcoholic of the entire story. Personally, I would have gone with the Belgian Golden Strong Ale to represent Cersei, links to that video there and in the description, um, but it's essentially in the same vein of beer style as a blonde Belgian ale, but it's going to be a little more bitter, and it's also going to be higher in alcohol content, which I think would represent Cersei perfectly. Also, gold and strength are Cersei's whole mood, so the name of that beer style even fits better than the Sour Blonde. Really, this one just misses the mark for me. It doesn't capture Cersei the way I want it to, but you know, it's still a decent beer. The final beer on the list is King in the North, which is a barrel-aged imperial stout for Jon Snow, described as an imperial stout aged in bourbon barrels for six months. The beer is as black as pitch with aromas of roast, bourbon, and chocolate, a fitting companion for a long, dark night. Okay, that sounds pretty fitting for Jon Snow, so let's see how it is. Oh. oh, no. Okay. Oh, wow. This is 11%. What? Oh, my God. That's delicious. Yes! This beer is painting a picture in my mind. I see Jon Snow, it's winter, he's got his furs, he's sitting by a crackling fire at Winterfell, writing some documents, or whatever the King in the North needs to write, I don't know, but this, I think, is a great choice. It has just as much strength as I would expect for the King in the North. It's got great oakiness. It's sweet, but not like too sweet. Nice and warming. I think this is perfect for Jon Snow. Overall, I think Omidang, <laughs> Omidang. Overall, I think Omegang did a pretty good job. They got three out of four for me, which is a passing grade. If anything, my biggest complaint is that they didn't make beers for my two favorite characters, Sansa and Arya. We stand the Stark sisters in this household, and if you can't get behind that, then get out of my face! Personally, I'd love to see more beers based after characters like this. It gives me the perfect opportunity to geek out, and I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so my ask for this video, in the comments down below, please tell me who your favorite character is and what kind of a beer you would brew for them. Mine is Shrek, and I'd make him a cream ale. Other than that, if you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do that right, wait for it, now. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!